We're ready to set up our score system, but first we're going to need a font. Over here in the assets, I have added a font called Font Score, and I am using a font that I have called Featured Item. The size and all of this may have to be different depending on which font you decide to go with, but I am including not only the numbers, but also all of the letters. So, close that, and then we'll reopen the Object Scorekeeper. So first I'm going to initialize our score. Over here in the score tab, I'm going to set score. That score will be zero to begin with. I'm also going to come to control and create a new variable. And that variable is going to be called extra underscore life. And I'm going to set that to a value of one. Next in our draw event, I want to draw the score on screen, but first we need to specify the font and the color. So let's come to the draw tab and we're going to find our settings, set font, I'm going to use the font score with an alignment left, and then I'm going to set color, I'll just keep it that white, and then back in the score tab I'm going to find this draw score, and I'm going to have that draw at 500x, 448y, and I'll just keep this default caption of score. And we can close this object and then we need to come and reopen our object player laser. So we'll select this collision with the object enemy parent and now we can give ourselves some points when we destroy an enemy. So I'm going to come back to the score tab, set score, and above this last destroy instance I'm going to set the score to 100 and make it relative. You can change the number of points you want to give the player for when they destroy something. But now we also need to see if they have earned enough points for an extra life. So I'm going to come back to control and test variable. Drag that underneath the score. And we're going to have this apply to the object scorekeeper. And what we're looking for is a variable of score and a value of extra underscore life times 1,000. And I can space this out for better readability, but we're going to give the player an extra life every 1,000 points. And we need to make the operation greater than or equal to. So let's drag some blocks underneath that. And we'll come back to score. And we are going to set lives. Set lives to one relative, so we add one life. And then come back to control, set variable, and we want this applying to the object scorekeeper and we're going to give it the variable extra underscore life one relative. So we're going to add one to the extra life variable. And so what that's going to do is just increment the amount of points we need for the next extra life. When we start out, our extra life variable is equal to one, so one times 1,000 means that at 1,000 points we get an extra life. Since we're adding one to the extra life counter as well, that'll turn it to a value of two meaning that the next one will be 2 times 1,000, which is 2,000, and so on. That may be a little too frequent for what you want. You might want to set this to 10,000 or whatever, but you can always change that. For our purposes, this will be good enough. But we don't just want this applying to the regular enemies. We also want it to apply to the cannons and the boss itself. So I'm going to select all of this, as well as the set score relative to 100, and I'm going to copy it. Then we can close this, come back to our enemies, and open the object cannon. And with the collision of the object laser, in between our create instance of an explosion and the destroy instance, I'm going to paste our scores. So now every time we destroy a cannon, we will also get 100 points. You might want to change that, maybe you'll make it worth more. And then finally, we need to do this with the boss as well. So in the step event, right before we change the player into the object thrust and underneath the destroy instance, we'll paste this in again. But this time the boss is going to be worth more, so instead of a score of 100, I'm going to give it a score of 1000. So you're guaranteed an extra life as soon as you kill a boss. Go ahead and close this and open up our main room again and I'm going to place a few of these enemies over here 
hopefully I can destroy them all, but I'm also going to add our enemy boss. So all of these guys will be on screen, but we'll see if we can destroy them all in one go. So let's close that room. No, I don't want to remove. And test it. Okay. See, I'm getting my points. And if I can destroy all of these things, whoops. Well, now I'm down to two lives, but if I can destroy the boss, I should get my extra life. And there it is, score of 1800, and I got my extra life and we're ready to move on to the next level. We should probably also get around to making our menus work so that we can go back and forth. We'll create a title screen. And finally, we'll get to the heart of the side-scroller game. So far, believe it or not, all we've done is set the groundwork. To make this an actual game, we need to introduce something new called the timeline, which will allow us to program in the waves of enemies that will come on screen. So we'll introduce that in the next video.